Hmm. Hello, loves. Full moon in Scorpio. <laughs> yeah. So, full moon in Scorpio. This is the one I would say I remember every single year. <laughs> I was thinking today that I need to actually block off like a, a week around full moon in Scorpio and have that set aside for nothing because what so tends to happen when the phase of um, the full moon in Scorpio starts coming our way is that we all in some way feel very heavy with something happening in our life. Um, it can just be that you go through extreme fatigue, it can be that you get sick, but most likely what happens are things come into your life at this time that just feel really heavy, dense, and like immovable. Um, they tend to be things that you can't escape from, so they really kind of keep you from seeing the bigger picture. Instead, you're just in, in, in the trenches with something, whether it is making a decision, whether it is an argument, whether it is, um, you know, even something like Nepal, something that's just on your mind. Um, a lot of times with this energy, too, we tend to have things that kind of really take us to the depth in life, um, but the, what the whole purpose is of moving through this energy is seeing that there's always light in every dark situation that happens in our life. So um, about a week ago I had gotten the, the energy was starting to come in and it was, I was hearing these words about how we were going to have to deal with what was in the rubble and that happened before the earthquake in Nepal so I thought that was kind of perfect how it really did line up with what was already coming through me that there was really strong messages of taking care of this baggage stuff before you can move forward so all of us have something whether it's actual clutter in your house whether it's clutter in relationships, whether it's clutter with decisions, whatever it is, it's things that we are holding on to that we're actually having to climb over uncomfortably to make this other stuff work. So we're all being stopped and you might think, no, I don't have time to stop, I don't have time to deal with this. Um, but really the universe is forcing you to and if you don't want to deal with it, you'll probably just have fatigue and then you'll have depression because you have to do all these things but if you just really kind of read the signs of what you need to look closely at right now what you need to delve into you know what you need to take care of that's actually keeping you from moving forward so this is a really big purging time and Another really big aspect of it is that relationships are coming into this one. And what it's meaning is that a lot of people are possibly letting go of relationships or people that aren't really for the best for us. Or there's just things to be figured out within the relationship dynamics that in in bringing the peace to them and in rising to a higher position with them we are able to move forward in much more positive and progressive ways and when i say progressive i you know i really um what it just made me think of was um you know when we have friction or altercations with others we have these really old world ways of dealing with them where we tend to go to somebody else and we attack the other person. So you have a pro you have a, a situation with your partner and you're fighting and you go to your best friend and you tell them all about it and you rip him to shreds and um, you make him feel so small and you really kind of work the energy to manipulate that person so that they too feel the same way that you do, that that person is horrible. Can you believe what that horrible, horrible person did? And But then what happens is then you tend to make up with them and there's this extra heavy baggage there that was created by you that now that other person has to like climb over 
in order to kind of bridge a peaceful relationship with your partner again. And if you, a lot of this stuff I kind of think of as like high school mentality, you know, where we, we don't just deal with things in an emotionally mature way or go directly to the person that we have a problem with. We tend to fight and then we disengage and we go off to somebody else and rip the person to shreds. And why I'm feeling that in this relationship thing right now is because we're in, you know, full moon Scorpio and there's no other sign that goes lower and more nasty than Scorpio. And it also is always coming from a perspective of I'm right. I'm right and someone else is wrong. So it's always kind of creating a dynamic of good person, bad person. And from the eyes of the Scorpio, they're always going to be the good person and the other person's the bad person. And in this energy, we can really buy into these situations and um, we can really just like through the voice of our hurt selves really drop a lot of damaging bombs um, that we are trying to learn through right now in realizing that that is not a progressive way to deal with friction with others. So, you know, what happens too with that is that, you know, when we go and dump this big load on someone that's purely for our side only and coming from being hurt, we are influencing the other person so that now they don't look out with the same vision as they used to. They're going to remember what you told them about that person. And I think the energies right now or even what is going to be leading up in the next couple of weeks is our people are going to have these opportunities to grow and they're going to have these opportunities where they're going to go back into that like high school mentality of I'm going to go rip on that person, call him a bitch, put them down, say all these mean things and what I want you to do is really to awaken in you that that's one side of the story and it's not the whole side of the story and you are only damaging yourself when you continue in that kind of behavior because it's not how we're supposed to deal with people you know when we're hurt if anything we need to take the time to process on our own we need to go hiking we like for me how I do it whenever I have friction it's like I take it out to the <laughs> take it out to the trails and I da 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 you know I get it all out and then it just kind of clears out of me and I also have a Libra midheaven so what I'm kind of ex how I'm expressing out in the world is very much balanced like that so I'm always very much aware of there's two sides and because I'm so aware that there's two sides it's hard for me to just hold on to my side of the story as the only side of the story so I'll be like well she did this because da 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 and I just start to like soften and get to the middle ground and um and because I've learned, well, I actually had it really fortunate because growing up and everywhere I've moved except for Santa Fe, I've always had, everywhere I move, I, there's usually two best friends and then other layers of friends, but two best friends. And they never like each other. <laughs> it always works out perfectly for me because they never cross-pollinate. <laughs> so I have these separate things and I, I really like that actually. I kind of like everything's kind of separate. I have a separate thing over here. I have a separate thing here. But in Santa Fe it's much more, it's a smaller town. Everybody knows each other. So you really have cross-pollinations of friendships. So it's the first time I've ever had that in my life. But it's also the first time I've ever had these situations where like even like things will come to me, people will say things, I've had people say things about other people that you know I just wish I never even knew and they were sharing their deepest darkest secrets and I knew that the person was sharing it because they were hurt but it's still you know it's things that I can't ever forget now and I look at that person and I remember their deep I know their deepest darkest secret you know and but I should not know that and um, it, it's what we're needing to do is upgrade in how we react when we are hurt or how we react when we are in a conflict with other people how we react when two heads are knocking with totally different perspectives of a situation and the point is that um, 
You know, we need to be really conscious with how we speak out when we're talking from our hurt selves and either keeping it to ourselves or at least, you know, not being so damaging of slamming someone to the ground, um, you know, suddenly just like t saying all these things that are so mean and hurtful, trying to influence somebody else to not like them too or whatever. And we also need the person who's hearing the information to upgrade in that they are also also very aware that there's two sides of this. We always have to remember there's two sides to everything. And we need that perfect balance in things. We need the sun, we need the moon, we need the day, we need the night, we need the winter, we need the summer. So to think that we're often going to come together with two opposing views is perfect. That's how it absolutely should be. And that's okay and there's nothing wrong for, with it. And um, so we need the person who hears things to also remember there's two sides and not to then fuel this energy in the wrong way uh, by hearing somebody in their hurt voice and believing that that's the only side of the story and then like attacking whoever the other person is that they are you know talking about and I was thinking I don't you know for me whenever I ever have a problem with someone I keep it to myself I don't like to read that stuff about somebody else. One, because I always realize there's another side. Two, because I always realize we're here to learn something in arguments. So who am I to like, you know, go to another friend and bash somebody else when it's like there's obviously something for me to learn in this. And I think even more so if I bash them. So I'm going to try to do everything I can not to bash them <laughs> and to handle it on my own and not really include anybody else in the picture. That is not most people out there though. I know most people we have this old world emotionally immature way of I'm hurt, I'm not going to talk to you, I'm not going to go direct to you and tell you I'm hurt and want to heal this, but I'm instead going to go bash you behind your back and <laughs> convince other people to be on my side because that's the factor too. It becomes this thing of like my side, you know, when I have all these people on my side, I feel more powerful. And what we really need to learn is when we're acting like that, when we're doing that kind of behavior out in the world, we're really just not in our truth yet. We're not really living our truth. We're not really confident with ourselves because if we were confident with ourselves, we wouldn't need to go to others to get our team even bigger of this side of the team, you know? And it's it's an emotional immature thing of needing to now be filled up by other people's energy saying, "He did what? Oh my god, that bastard da 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 and then you're like I know I know he did you know and then it's like buying into that victim mentality you feel better because somebody's feeling sorry for you <laughs> and, and we need to get rid of that one that one has just got to go so a lot of this energy right now feels super based around that but really kind of um bringing that lesson to it and I almost feel like you know with the last recording I did I feel like it applies so much to what we're going through right now so that's why I kinda feel like this might be a couple weeks ahead of the game and you're gonna have something where you're knocking heads with someone you know cuz that's Scorpio energy it's aggressive and because it's I'm right there's no leeway. It's it's very much like a, a black and white situation. It's not fluid. It's fixed. It's not you know you know um, you know. Then we're you know. It's not like let's try to work this out. It's it's very much like Aries with my way or the highway. So to think that a lot of people are going to be you know um, bumping into situations that are you know my way versus your way is to put it mildly <laughs> I would say a lot of people are <laughs> everyone thinks they're right right now that's the Scorpio energy too I'm right I'm right I'm right there's just this block that's I'm but I'm right um, so um, I would imagine that uh, uh, a lot of people are going to kind of have situations like this so do kind of take this as a warning and work to see how you can handle this stuff in a new world way you know where you are actually working for peace because I don't believe war and then just walking away is okay and I think we all know that we all know that it's gonna keep bringing more situations like that and even if you do need to walk away 
um, after you have the peace, then that, that's okay. Because it really just needs to be that the energy is decharged you know it really needs to be unplugged because if it's it's fast and furious and nasty but then you know the scene you just leave the scene um, it's still there it's still under the surface it's still bubbling and it's still provoking you and it's still pissing you off in your spare time and it's still on your mind and it still has you having these negative feelings about what this is around so it's just really important to do whatever you can to diffuse that and to you know bring the understanding and peace in whatever you in whatever way you can but in really just understanding that there's two sides there's always several sides to a story you know and especially when both parties are hurt um, you know so it's not really kind or high vibrational to bash somebody else when they're coming from their own side of experiences as are you and you've just triggered something in each other and it's you know I get a lot of people who say things like you know I, I'm, I'm on this spiritual path now and I, you know, I feel like I'm not supposed to have fights with people or I'm supposed to have total harmony with my, with my family, right? Because I'm on the spiritual path and I'm always like love, relation, rela fighting is how we learn in life. You know, it's kind of that hotter, colder thing in life of going toward, towards what's, well, which one do we go towards? I guess we go towards warmer, huh? But, you know, going towards what feels like harmony harmony disharmony we're always learning through harmony and disharmony and arguments with others are always like the greatest learning opportunities it's showing something about us it's showing something about what we need to see always and it's also showing us like maybe what we deserve in life um, maybe some showing us what we need to expect more of in life I feel like you know especially with friendships I have you know Venus and Aquarius so I've always had tons and tons and tons of friends I meet people so easily I love people so naturally I bond with people so naturally but um, I don't feel that a hundred percent affinity with everyone but I the older I've gotten and you know the more I've traveled around and met new people and you know, start over and meet new people again I've just realized this kind of harmony there's a there's a potential for almost a hundred percent harmony with people and those friends are the ones that always stick with me as I move on to my next adventure you know so those are the ones that are always there in my life but it's where it's just really natural and it really flows and and um, and it really feels like family and it really feels like you can say anything and be who you are and not be judged or whatever you know what it's like when it feels really good like family and then we also know other ones where we might have all this stuff in common but it, there's just compromise there's lots of compromise or there's lots of you know friction or whatever and so I also feel like the arguments and the fights um, are also kind of always steering you towards um, going toward that harmony that harmony vibration that you can have with people and it maybe it's just that boundaries were crossed and in another form you could be friends with some people in some form you can't be kind of like with work some people you can be friends with but you can't work with them some people you can work with but you can't be friends with you know so maybe it's just another category of how they come together in your life but ultimately the main thing is you know learning from the arguments and the provocation that happens in our life and often you know a lot of people well, what I really got with this energy too is that we're, we're facing blind spots so we're seeing something now that we really couldn't see before and it's just it's out of our view it's back there it's not something you can easily access it's not something you can naturally see about yourself so it's kind of your blind spot but you know it's something you need to see but even with um, you know arguments I think a lot of times um, a lot of times one what we're really learning in arguments with others is to learn how to apologize you know and learn how to just humble ourselves drop the ego and be like dude I'm so sorry I should not have said that I you know and 
I actually had this provocation come up over this these posts that I wrote about because I really you know I really want to I've always really wanted to steer things into sharing health information and that's why too I'm you know having my girl Rosie create all these tonics and all these kind of potions and I'm really interested in how to stay healthy so that cancer cells don't become tumors and become things that become life-threatening diseases because I have it built into me where I believe that we all naturally have cancer cells at different times in our life through stressful situations or whatever like just kind of like how we sometimes have colds we sometimes have um, we sometimes have um, we sometimes have the flu you know and um, um, Gosh, do I really tell that? Um, um, but I think that um, we, we, uh, we, we have the potential to regenerate cells. I think it's a natural process, and I don't know any of this stuff for a fact. Um, probably if I talked to my girl Rosie, she would set me straight because she knows this, but it's just what I feel in my body. And I feel like we regenerate things and our, our cells regenerate and, and sometimes we will have cancer. And if we do go into a doctor at a certain time and find that cancer, our mind then attaches to we have cancer and it's so much harder to heal it because we, we have these death sentence things when we think of cancer. We don't think of cancer in any beautiful bright light. We think of it as death sentence. Oh my God, that's my greatest, biggest fear. You know, I don't know anybody who doesn't fear cancer and especially because the number are just huge of how many people are going to be getting cancer in their lifetime now like one in two you know or something that's just so huge like that so just think how many one in twos do you have around you you know so it's basically like a flip of a, a, co a coin toss <laughs> but um, but I just really have I really believe that you know we can if we're in these certain cycles and doing these certain things, we really can kind of um, clear out those cancer cells. And I am deciding to not share what I was supposed to share, and maybe I'll share it later, but it's way too um, personal. And that's where I was like, are you kidding me? We're going to talk about that. But um, so... Anyway, so I got in this dispute with this guy because I've really gotten passionate about it because I had a client who told me that she healed her stage 4 breast cancer with no surgery, no chemo, and no radiation. And now I have like 20 people who also are sharing their stories with me of the same kind of things um, where it was diet, exercise, you know, thought, all these kind of things. And I had this person who really came aggressive, aggressive at me and attacked me is how I put it. And, you know, it was like, you need to take that down. You're telling misinformation to ignorant people and just really kind of blasted me for having this opinion. And I came back and was just like, you know, there's no way you're going to influence me to your side of the story. I believe this. I feel it in my soul that I am speaking the truth and there's no way you can ever influence me to believe that no you have to get chemo if you get cancer you have to it's the only 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 way I don't believe that I am so like earth earth loving you know um, I just so believe everything we have is here and call me crazy I don't care what you call me I love how I believe I love how I see life and it feels good to me it's like thriving and I'm very positive about it I'm very just like I just feel like there's something to this and I also know that we really are moving into a new paradigm so to think that all that stuff is going to have to be re-examined is like well yeah that's one of the things that we have to re-examine illness anyway so we had this huge battle back and forth back and forth back and forth it went on for two days and finally I was just like finally I just had to stop it and give it some love and give it some soft and come from a new approach, not mirroring the attack, 
but just kind of coming from this soft motherly supportive it's all good we both come from different perspectives there's nothing wrong with that and instantly the energy was diffused and then we started speaking in different ways he really explained how from his side of things he's only seen people live from chemo and he's seen people die from trying alternative methods from my perspective I've only seen people die from from cancer treatment I haven't seen people live around me from cancer treatment I've only seen them die so I'm not really all that positive about it you know <laughs> but we're both coming from these different perspectives and it made it so clear why we were speaking the way we were and why we were so holding steady to our side of the story but once like the softness came in once I brought the softness he brought the softness and then it was just like this beautiful exchange I don't have one bad feeling about him I was even like thank you for you know making me you know see this from another perspective too. Thank you for sharing the links you did with me. Um, you know, and just really like me also realizing that this is a really touchy subject and I need to um, really be aware of not shoving anything down anyone's throat if they're not ready for it. Just how I don't want anybody shoving anything down my throat. Um, and and so so it was healed it was you know brought to this beautiful space but it was because of my choice to back down and bring the love and bring the soft and when you're dealing with Scorpio energies the only way to really diffuse that arrogant I'm right my way or the highway mentality is to go to Taurus and bring the love bring the patience bring the love um, bring kind of a more understanding attitude of not needing to be right. You know, when you're dealing with someone who needs to be right, you need to not be right. <laughs> Let them be right. <laughs> what does it matter, you know? Um, um, but to, to match that just seems like it never works and you can go back at each other a million times and then be so frustrated and have your day ruined over this thing or you can bring the love and just recognize that we're all coming from different perspectives in life which is another reason why none of us are to shove any one of our um, ideas down anyone's throat and um, and that's what I said to him too. I said, you know what, we should really go to what, who supports our visions. You know, we should immerse ourselves in people who want to hear the ways that we believe. Um, just because it feels so much better. <laughs> who wants to debate over this stuff? I'm, I'm not out to convince anybody of anything that I believe in. I have no problem if people fight me. I have no problem if people reject me. I have no problem. I don't have that thing of, I just wish that the whole world would love me. Like, I'm not even interested in that. I, I don't even have 1% of me that cares if you don't like me. If you don't like me, fine. If you don't like how I talk, fine. If you don't like what I talk about, that's cool. I respect that. And I really had that tested in me by that guy. And what it showed me is I still have a little bit of that fight in me in somebody opposing something that I know is right. But you know he knows he's right too so it did really I got a really big wake-up call lesson in um, my own ego needing to be right um, or should I really put it like that because I don't feel like I needed to be right I just needed him not to shove his opinions down my throat but I got a really big le lesson in learning that um, I don't need to engage when somebody else is trying to shove their ideas down my throat um, I'm like, wait, that's actually more what I learned because I I don't really care to be right. <laughs> I'm like, whatever, you're you're right too. I'm not really interested in that. I'm actually pretty good with that one because um, I don't like to debate. That's where he said he said, should we turn this into a public debate? And he had these two people, and he said, I can line this up with them. I don't know if they do radio things or whatever. And I was like, I was like, I'm not good at debating. <laughs> There's no way I'm putting myself in that situation. I'm not looking to argue my point. I'm not looking to convince anybody <laughs> who's not a non-believer. <laughs> I was like, actually, no, I'm not really good at debating stuff. So that's not going to work with my inability to retain <laughs> information. I would just flunk up there, you know. So I'm like, no, I'd much rather just share what I believe and have it match up with other people who resonate with that and it, me being a catalyst that encourages them to do this too. Because what I really believe is that, and we know this, we don't, we don't know if it can be done until it's done. 
And then when it's done, we have a new way of believing that it can be done. It can be done. You know, so once you see somebody come out of the rubble and come from nothing and rebuild in a massively strong way, then you know it can be done. You know, even my story of coming from nothing, you know, zero, you know, fears constantly of how will we afford food? How will we afford power? You know, fears, fears. I was biting my nails at two, you know, like, oh my gosh. So I didn't have that solid foundation of knowing I would be supported. And then, you know, having the, you know, the Saturn return take everything from me and destroy me. And, you know, over a decade of never having more than $5, you know, even though now I'm like, perfect, I guess that's all I needed. And at least I had that. But um, I came from absolutely nothing, and then I went through an adult cycle of nothing again, and nothing working out. And, and so it's just kind of really, and now I'm in this great space where I, you know, even I went and got more lottery scratch-offs. I've been, I have won so much money on lottery scratch-offs because every ticket I ever buy now is a winner. <laughs> it's so crazy funny. It's like I know it. It's, and I'll know it. Everyone I pick, I'm like, it's a winner. And before that, I never, ever won a penny. <laughs> and now I always do. But um, I was thinking about doing them a giveaway, too. I'll be like, here's a pile of scratch-offs. <laughs> here's 200 bucks. Go have fun. Um, cause I haven't even cashed any of them in yet, <laughs> but, um, it's still just more fun. Um, so I need to probably check those lottery tickets too. <laughs> I probably have winners in there, but I, I, I've turned my life around and now that I've done it and now that I talk about it, you now know it can be done. So through my own journey, um, you now know that you can do the same. And even if you're sitting there, you know, on the brink of losing your home, um, you know, so much of that time I didn't even have a car, you know, I'd have to walk two miles to even get to a job, you know. But um, um, it, was, it was fun, though. I always made the most of it. And, um, but now you know, you know, through my journey that it can be done. And that's what I want to, with the cancer stuff. First off, I also want to put it out there that if anybody has cured themselves of cancer, whether you went conventional methods or non-conventional methods, I want you to reach out to me because I'm starting some articles and I'm going to be doing these interview series. They're just question answer. So it's really cool. And I have like the coolest questions because I know what we want to know. And um, I already have about 20 people who have said they want to be interviewed, but um, if you are one of them, please reach out to me because I want to share this information with people because the more people that read that it's being done are going to be able to, to move miracles in their own healing journey through what these people are going to provide you as guidance because I don't know any of this for fact because I've not had to walk this path but these people have and I want to kind of be a bridge of their stories to you so that if and when it happens to you or someone else we have this real life information that is um, can help us in making decisions or can help us in, in, in the healing journey. I, I, this one woman gave me all these products that I've never even heard of and what I've discovered on them, I'm like, oh my gosh, how come these aren't everywhere? How come we all don't know about this stuff? But, you know, um, um, you know, preventing cancer is, you know, you know, because cancer I think is like a million dollars a person for most cancers. So it's, you know, it's big pharma money and preventing it with these things that are natural, <laughs> um, or at least the brown seaweed is, that's the one that um, I'm going to be recommending that we all um, implement in building our um, cells and immune system. But I'm going to talk about that at another time, not for now. So, uh, but, um, so this energy, you know, so much of this one is about facing things that we've, we interpret as dark, painful, nightmarish. And I've also noticed a really huge wave the past couple weeks or so of people coming at me with stories of what is happening to people that they know that are just they're like the worst nightmares you could ever imagine these people dying in ways that you're like your your mind can't even get around the synchronicity of these events that aligned that in happening and 
um, accidents to leading to paralysis where like the stories of how they came together are just like how did that happen you know you have to trust these things when they happen that way but they're so far out they've really shown me and inspired me to want to really bring the message to everybody too that life is so fragile and we never know when the rug is going to get pulled out from us we can think that our life is so beautiful and we're so lucky and we've had the most amazing experience ever on this earth journey but you never know what's just down the road same way as you never know when the most amazing things are just down the road you also never know when those situations are going to drop into your lap that are going to test you more than anything you could ever have imagined being tested over um, but what we're you know even like with Nepal you know um, we're always going to eventually see the light in these things I remember too with 9-11 um, when that happened my very first thought I mean before I even freaked out about what it was my very first thought was oh my god is this gonna open so many people's hearts oh my god is this gonna so bring us together oh my god is this gonna so make us love our neighbors and that's exactly what happened um, and like I've said before we're gonna keep having things like this that keep coming to awaken us to loving one another and uh, being aware of one another I really wish that you know I know that so many people are reaching out in, with Nepal because they're such beautiful peoples and, and it's such a beautiful part of the country but I would like people to more start seeing the people in their neighborhood who need help too and um, a big part of this energy is awakening that humanitarian heart um, that was actually a big part of this energy before any of this stuff even happened to magnetize to mirror that part of this energy is in having things happen of a darker nature of a more painful nature so that people's hearts open to wanting to help our fellow fellow brothers and sisters so we already were aligning to that and then situations in the world just showed up to reinforce that that's what's happening right now and that's why it's happening but it's also to bring us to home with that too you know I um, I'm really big on pitching on on um, picking up hitchhikers <laughs> and um, um, I was driving home and I passed this young guy and uh, I was like I, I passed him and I was already you know on this old Las Vegas highway you know so you're going 55 and I was like ah oh, and, and you know my conscience just got to me and it was like oh, okay you gotta have you gotta go to what's it called you gotta go to um, what's it called all these people who listen Harry's Roadhouse all these people who business at fair like I ate at Harry's Roadhouse but so I got up to Harry's Roadhouse and was like I gotta turn around and go get that dude I mean just do it no one else is gonna do it he's got you know let's just do it you're going that direction so I pulled around and then I got to this gas station and waved him over because he was across the street and I wouldn't have been able to pull over and grab him so I'm honking at him and come on come on and he came and, um, and it ended up being my favorite hitchhiker ever it was so wonderful he's a triple Virgo and you know how I think Virgos are the coolest Virgos and Taurus are my very favorite peoples ever I'm always gonna go to Virgo and Taurus um, but uh, so um, so we we were riding home and and I and I took him about 15 miles back down to El Dorado and uh, so we had the greatest conversation we were so talking about energy um, he was talking about how you know every day I have to really keep this hope and keep the faith and trust that everything's happening as it should and just because it's like this right now doesn't mean it's always gonna be that way and you know he's just a powerhouse of wisdom I'm like yeah 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 it was so much fun and he was saying um, we were I don't even know how that came about or what how, how we got on that but he said he said yeah he was like you know oh I told him I said you know I have the greatest idea for a documentary but I don't think it could be done because you need the person's permission but it'd be so great if we had these homeless people who traveled you know across country and went to every city and really kinda showed how people treat them how people talk to them and how giving the the places are you know and really kind of you know because anytime I'm gonna be like hi and I'm like, here here's just 20 and here's some dog food and yeah I'd be in the movie all like you know like best friends with the person because I instantly like I see these people and I see it like 
there's a little old person that fell down on the side of the road. You know, everybody would slam on the brake to help them. And that's how I am when I see homeless people. It's this natural thing in me of let me help them. And that's why I couldn't leave that guy on the highway. Um, you know, I know that most people aren't going to pick him up. There weren't great spots to pull over anyway. So my brain was like, just get him, you know, help him out. And um, so... I was talking about that and I was like, yeah, it would be the best documentary to kind of like see that. You know, I was like, I would love to watch that. And he was like, yeah. And he said, you know what? He said, I hate to say this. He said, but it's like, you know, you just know every time when you see a Mercedes or a BMW, he's like, you just, you know, and he didn't finish it. And I was like, what? That they, they don't, they don't give you any money. They don't help out. And he's like, never, it's never happened. They ignore you or they scowl at you, but they never. Um, he's like, I've never seen it. And he said, I hate to say it. I don't want to like say that is a bad thing, but it's just, he said, the people who always stop and help or pick me up always have rickety old, you know, me and my like, you know, 230,000 mile car. It's so dirty too from the dusty roads. But, um, but she's a good car. She takes care of me. You know, I don't need that status symbol of something nice. I'm like, but she takes care of me. So but um, he's like, yeah, but the people with the rickety old cars, like those are the people who always stop. Those are the people who find something to help out with. Um, those are the ones who, you know, always offer something or kind words or a smile or a peace sign. And I'm like, that's so cool. And I'm like, but you know, it is because, you know, when you've known difficulties or struggles in life, you're more likely to help other people. And another really part of this energy too is that, just because you have all these things and all these status symbol things doesn't mean you're really happy. And we know that money doesn't buy happiness. A lot of people can be like, oh my God, I'm so happy. I have all these beautiful things. I have all these things, 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 things. But what we don't realize is that the floor can bottom out at any time and you lose all those things. And that's what we've really seen with the recession. And a lot of people who are spending money on fr frivolous, silly status symbol things are like now losing all those houses, losing all those cars, having to go to public school now, um, and really learning that just having all these things doesn't mean you're going to be happy in life. And that's a really big one when we're talking Taurus and Scorpio. And this kind of addiction to possessions, addiction to thinking, I am happy in life because I have all these things. And I've just noticed that a lot of people who feel that way then tend to lose those things and then really learn what kind of things are a true source of happiness like the beautiful environment we live in and what we get to look out at the sky the trees the nature good friends you know um, beautiful people who reach out to help you beautiful people who support you um, having health um, you know, especially if you're someone who has migraines or a lot of things, other things, but, um, which I just want to say too, that I've gone plant-based diet, uh, and have not had one migraine in almost two months. And that's never been my whole life, but I'll talk more about that too. When I, we get on to all the health cancer and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, what is happiness is not what a lot of us have thought of as happiness because we think well if I have all these things if I have all these nice clothes if I have all this nice jewelry if I have all these outside things then I'm happy and it even makes me think of you know when I was younger I was very much into superficial things I mean I well, and I don't mean it in a bad way but I designed clothes I was a makeup artist I was very much like I could not leave the house unless I was done up and hot you know I was very much aware of my looks I was very much aware of my body I was very much aware of wanting to always be like hot and sexy and 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 then like when I first moved to San Francisco when I was like 25 um, that just shifted in me completely. That's when I stopped wearing makeup. Um, that's when I also, you know, kind of embarked on this other path and was really like, I want to influence people from the inside out. You know, yeah, I can create these really cool clothes and have them feeling really confident and cool in them, but how cool to, you know, 
influence people from the inside out and that's when my life fell apart and I lost everything so I almost see that as that was my schooling to really learn how to be happy in life even when you can't hardly pay your bills you know and be happy in life even when you only have enough food for today you know so I got to kinda you know go further in that with that homeless guy um, um, on kind of the same thing and we were on the same page and you know now I can manifest money I've made more money in the past three years than I have in my whole life but I also too donate so much of it I keep it flowing every day <laughs> I am supporting my fellow brothers and sisters every single day and I don't really hold on to it I'm not really gung-ho on savings I'm like I just I just believe it keeps flowing in when it keeps flowing out with kind of no strings attached and also that it's not necessarily something for me so you know I gave that guy twenty dollars when I dropped him off and he was like oh my gosh you're an angel and I was like I've heard that before <laughs> and I was like I kind of am an angel but um, I you know I was quick to take that compliment but um, but it's something that I don't even think about you know I wasn't like no that's my 20 I need it for this that and the other it's more like I had a 20 here go treat yourself go take care of yourself go get a good meal you know go you know whatever so um, that uh, the energy of this time right now is in losing things of you know where the foundation kinda collapses in on itself and we totally have a new perspective of life and then from that really learning what is important and also to even with things like uh, even things like with Nepal and all the people dying I didn't even hear about it till way later because I'm <laughs> I don't know anything going on in the world I live in my own little happy bubble but um, I don't really I missed Obamacare again this year too because I didn't know that the, the, of the deadline and I missed it by like a week I'm like ah oh, I can't you know, send me a notification because <laughs> I don't watch news. I don't watch Yahoo stuff. I don't know what's going on in the world. People, I need people to, to let me know about that. But um, um, with one thing too, with people dying, I do want you all to know that dying is not something to fear or something that when you die you ever think of as something that you regret. Um, and I think we're really kind of having more death consciousness. I feel like there's authors out there that are either producing books or will be because there is a lot of information in the death process and in what happens when we cross over. But I can tell you that it's nothing to regret um, or to think of as a bad thing. We, we also really need to bring a new perspective to death. Um, it's kind of a blessing. Um, it's kind of hard to say it like that, but it's kind of it's kind of like winning the lottery is what people feel when they die. Um, but we don't understand that until it happens to us. So, you know, understand there's a lot of light in the death process, and we just have to kind of evolve up with that because because we don't have full knowing or most people don't have full knowing of what that's really all about we have fear around it and it's such a horrible thing but you know that's why I think it's wonderful that Oregon and Washington I don't know if they both have that um, right to die thing and and I think that's I think that's great um, um, because I don't know I just do I probably shouldn't get all into that topic right now because we're already at 50 minutes how does this time fly with me I always like I really want to keep it to 20 can I keep it to 20 and then it's like I'm here forever um, but it doesn't feel like forever to me because it feels like so much fun <laughs> I'm like so now we'll talk about <laughs> but um, okay so let me see if I got everything so you know um, Whatever is happening, whatever feels dense and heavy, you can't move out of it. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to make a decision. You're going back and forth, this, that, this, that. Just know that that's the theme of this energy anyway. It's always going to be when we have that Scorpio. It, it almost like It's almost like you become a dead weight. It's almost like you become heavier. A lot of times you can't work as much. You're really tired. You're not motivated. It's almost like we're just grounded down more than we want to be. Um, 
but also realizing we're needing to see what we need to let go of so that we can move on. Um, what we need to take care of, what in the rubble you need to take care of before you move on in a better way. And I don't, I think I said that, you know, even with your house, it might be, you really need to organize things. You really need to get the energy cleared out. You need to stop your forward motion and get things in order. So it can be like that. It can be like in the relationship realm too, where you're like, you really just need to, um, face these things, confront these things, bring them to the light, have the discussions. Uh, but, you know, going back with that too, whatever those discussions are, always try to create the peace because that's the high vibrational way. And that's what we're all learning to do is just to try to find that middle ground so that you can create, so that you can remember that this is your brother or sister, you know. And I always say that too, like, you know, if you can imagine, like, when you work at a cafe, you know, so many of your customers you just love, you know. And, and it's this da 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 because you're not really in their drama. You're not in their personal opinions of things. And you have this just natural affinity of just love and sweetness. And, and so if we can just always remember that there's that cord is always available, but it's going to take one person being like the new world person to introduce that and to say, you know, I'm sorry, you know, whatever, um, you know, I, I know my words hurt you or or whatever but just always kind of like putting yourself down in a way and not like putting yourself down in a bad way but humbling yourself down to then kind of come forward in a new way that's not matching aggression because that's the only way we can really have peace in the world and we can only have it through people who are living examples of that energy so don't be surprised if you get some opportunity to do that during this full moon and now you're armed with how to handle it so um I think that's that and uh, and let's say hey um, I think that's that and um, uh, and um, let's see oh in my shop I have the one half ounce empath shields now so they're available in the shop I have one ounce and one half ounce for travel or if you just want to first try to see how magical it is which it is and I have another product coming from Rosie in the works well I already have it here she already I already picked it up. I just, Sarah Wilder of the Fifth Element Life is making us another label because she's so good at them. So um, she's creating this one and it's, um, what, I'm ha what I had Rosie do was, because I'm trying to really focus on this, how do we get our bodies healthy now so that we can handle those situations when cancer cells form or, you know, a Pac-Man chomp through them and eat them gone. Um, so I asked her to create something that is based on Chinese medicine with the seasons and with how our organs are open to wanting to be supported with dirt with certain seasons and I was like I know that information's out there but I don't know what it is and I don't know what sources to really trust because Rosie's also um, informed me about the distilling process and how most people do like even you know like um, or you know with doing things with alcohol and they're most likely genetically modified and it's really harsh on the herbs she said so she does them with brandy and um, because they're grapes and it's just a much they even taste sweeter and um, and also in copper she uses copper and not aluminum um, because it's like the ancient way that they used to be done so everything about how she does things is really different but I had her create um, tonics for each season and the spring support because she's also really educated me on cleansing is not the best thing because it can be really harsh on the system and it can actually like put you back um, and and there's just better ways to treat the body so that it's support so that you're always supporting 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 the organs and this thing she created um, is going to call be called spring support she's working on summer support right now everything that's in it she handpicked um, over the past year in New Mexico 
So it's kind of really special and beautiful too that I came to her and said, do you have something that you can create and da da da. And within like, you know, 20 minutes, she was able to give me two batches of the spring support. And I have been doing it every morning. And you know, you guys will be able to do that too, half a dropper every morning on that empty stomach with lots of water. And it tastes so good. And I never think that with any of those kind of alcohol tonics and stuff, you're always still like, but it just even like the herbs that she has in it. I was like, this tastes so good. <laughs> so we're going to create those throughout the year that are always going to be giving you what your organs need during the specific seasons in reference from Chinese medicine that you don't necessarily know or, like I said, know where to go to really get the best quality so that it really does something in your body. Just like with the Empath Shield, everybody who's taking it, you know it does something. I mean, you notice it the moment, like what I said, the moment it touches your tongue, the moment you feel the tingles and you feel your aura set. It's magic like that. And everyone too is saying how you're so chatty and <laughs> you're not so self-conscious like you used to be. So I think it's a really big, amazing thing thing that we've created for the empaths well my idea her creation and that's what's so great is I'm such an idea person I'm always thinking 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 so it's really great that I have you know these people that I can be like can you make this and I have Rosie on this whole other one that I'm so incredibly excited for but it's a really big project and it's gonna take a while and she's well she's got things going on right now but um, so uh, let's see excited about that oh also um, on my Facebook page I created something called um, what did I call it chain love for Nepal and I want everyone who is having a sale donation in their store where you're going to give donations to go into there and tell us about your store so that we can find you and support people who are giving donations from their stores um, Rick also our sound healer created a sound meditation for healing mother earth and so we're going to do that too that's available for free on there and you can listen to that and you can also get a taste of his work too and then we're going to send all this supportive energy to nepal and, and strengthening like you'll get through this we always get through these things we always do these things always happen in history they always do they're always going to we're going to have more big bombs like this in a couple months they're going to keep coming i actually knew that people were going to die and we were going to be really shocked by it and i almost put it on facebook a couple weeks ago because <laughs> it came so huge as people are going to die and we're going to be really shocked by it and uh, I and, and I wondered if it was me <laughs> I was like I don't know if I should put that on there I was like I guess it would be kind of cool to put it on there and then I do die and then they're like she said that but I knew that people were gonna die and we were gonna be really shocked so I believe that was that happening um, also Sarah Wilder is she created this beautiful healing mandala and you can download it and 100% of the proceeds are going to this company that she found called Seven Women, and which you know you love that. And they're already there and giving emergency aid, and they're also going to stay around to help rebuild and teach them how to rebuild. So they're going to be there for the long haul. So 100% of her proceeds. And if any of you want to also do donation-based um, things, I, I think that's a great organization to send it to. I'll get Sarah to get more information. You can probably just even Google that. But um, so on that Facebook event page, you can go and get that information, get the free sound healing. Do it, you know, while you draw in the mandala. And I was suggesting that we did it on 11, 11 a.m. or p.m. on the full moon. So wherever you at, wherever you are at, it'll match up with other people's energies, and we'll send that healing love that way, so that things just can just kind of move more smoothly and and in a positive way, um, because a lot of the Scorpio energy is facing the dark but rising up in an empowered way, and um, moving on. You know, not just sitting there looking at the murk and all this nasty thing, but what can I learn from it? And um, how do I rise above this? So, uh, yes. So that's there, and you can go check that out. And, um, and um, I think that's that. I think I've got it all. I'm going to work on the writtens and get that out for you soon. I've been so, I've been one, I haven't really had too much drama because I've, I've also realized that when it comes to Scorpio, 
full moon, I hide. <laughs> I stay away from all the drama because it's so thick and heavy out there. <laughs> so you won't hear from me a week around <laughs> the full moon in, in Scorpio. But I also, too, I notice, too, that every year I get really tired around this time, really unmotivated. Uh, it's really hard to get work done. And all those things uh, have been exactly how my life has been this past week. So I'm kind of hoping, you know, after we at least get past this kind of the release of the full moon that I can get back into action and <laughs> take care of business because I'm just like a potato on the couch <laughs> right now. You can't do anything. But um, so that's why I was like, I'll get the writtens done soon. I think I'm going to work on them on Sunday. But um, okay, I think that's good. And it's been wonderful sharing this hour with you today. <laughs> I need to do this more often. <laughs> There's so much to talk about. And um, so, yes, so you have a beautiful full moon, and I will see you for the next new moon in Taurus. I'm so excited. I always love new moon in Taurus, too. I always love that one. That one just makes me so happy. It's always good news. It's always just, it's just like, it's a, it's a huge exhale after the heavy, dense Scorpio energy. And then to Taurus which is so wonderful and beautiful and love. And I'm also, I'm going to be getting, I, I think Sarah's going to have the label for the spring support in the next couple days. And then I'm going to get that loaded because I was really kind of hoping that people could start on that process on the new moon in Taurus, Earth. And everything was picked from the Earth and everything was um, processed in the most high vibrational way so that the potency of it is massive. That's why Rosie's Empath Shield is, was processed in such a magical way so that the herbs are potent and you take it and you're like, oh my gosh, I can function in life now. I'm not so sensitive. I'm not so wounded. I can't feel everybody else. It's just me here and I love me. <laughs> so um, the spring support is the same. And um, so I'm hoping to have people on that by the new moon. I thought that would be really cool. And, and yeah, so that's coming soon. And is there anything else? I think that's it. I think that's it. Okay. You have a beautiful full moon. And I will see you soon. Okay. Bye.